Hello and welcome to a Justice League video reaction. I've tried to do this like seven times already and I keep getting too freaking long. So we're going to be short <coughs> and sweet. I'm not really sweet. I'm kind of a douchebag. First of all, we have the 2017 version. This version was in 185. It was under two, two hours. 185 aspect ratio is slightly wider. Maybe about this wide? I don't know. I'm not a mathematician. It doesn't require math. It's a, nope. Um, Superman cell phone footage begins the movie, along with the Batman parademon fight. The end credit scene uh, with Flash and Superman. And this movie was basically to tie it up. Let's just rat tie off this little Snyder thing, and then we're going to split up. That was the intention of this movie, and let's make some money. Let's keep it under two hours, we'll get more. That was, let's just, they kind of gave up on it. That is what this is. This is giving up on a five-hour work print that they couldn't figure out how to make cohesive. So Joss Whedon came in, made some rewrites, and they made a lot of changes to make this movie. Just, let's just get some money and forget about it. It's kind of how it felt, kind of how it looks, kind of how it looks. This one is uh, Zack Snyder came back uh, with no money, he's not getting paid, uh, to complete his uh, version of his film. It was, um, it's four hours and two minutes. It begins at, at the end of Batman vs Superman. So it has this consistency of his, his movies anyway, of his Snyder versus Man of Steel, Batman v Superman, and Zack Snyder's Justice League. If you like the other two, you're going to like this movie. If you didn't like the other two, I don't even have a single clue why you would even want to watch this movie because you'd be lost. But uh, the thing I like the most about it are the ramifications uh, from Man of Steel. Since Superman has come to Earth, all this stuff happens. So Superman is your main focal point of this Snyderverse, um, even though he is a much different Superman than we've previously seen. Mo most people's... Uh, objections to Zack Snyder's Justice League or his version of the universe, it's not the versions they're used to. Every person has their own unique vision or version of the characters because there is no concrete one. People have their definitive, but there's no such thing as definitive because it's an opinion. Depends on when you're born. Are you a Nolan Batman guy? Are you a Michael Keaton Batman guy? Are you an animated series Batman guy? Are you an a Adam West Batman guy? Are you a Reno Romano Batman guy? Or are you a Robert Pattinson Batman guy? No wrong answer. Tastes, but it's part of the loveliness of the comic lore because there is no lore. We made it up. There's no definitive. So Superman is the focal point here. One thing I really like much better about the 2020 version, a 21 version, is he dies at the end of Batman vs. Superman. Okay, the death and return of Superman is clearly what they're going to do. They love doing it. It was the best-selling comic of all time. I only put in parentheses because that's what they say. I don't know. I didn't do the figures. So what this works about this is in two hours he comes back. This one's four hours. It takes him two hours to come back. So that two hours, you have like a whole movie there, and you kind of miss his presence. You feel how his presence is missed, kind of giving the point to Superman. Also... What's so genius about his version is, like I was saying before, each version bleeds into the next one. The end of Man of Steel is in the beginning of Batman vs. Superman, and Batman was amongst the chaos and destruction that was going on in the city, and the fact that he just had some beef with some guy from his planet just fucked up an entire city, including killing his friend at his, you know, place of business, kind of pissed Batman the fuck off. So that's why he's pissed off. It has it in the prologue with, you know, it's all there. Um, you know, so we understand that because Batman took a lot of Batman for Superman. It felt like a Man of Steel sequel, but it didn't feel like Batman, uh, Man of Steel sequel. Batman is the first name in Batman for Superman. So it's weird, but Superman takes a back seat and then he dies at the end of the movie. So this one has the scene right when, um, he actually kills Doomsday. That's where the movie begins, and his scream echoes, echoes across the entire planet, and it calls to the mother boxes, basically saying, yo, this guy's dead, come get me. That's basically what it says. Prompting Steppenwolf to come, and you see Steppenwolf search for the three boxes. Now why are these boxes here? Darkseid came thousands of years ago, and he tried to, he's like, yeah, I'm gonna take this shit. This shit's mine. And it didn't happen. He got fucked up. That was kind of cool, too. He got, oh, like, lots of blood. That was so cool to see. I was like, there's blood. 
So anyway, we're talking blood. Why do you like so much blood? What's with the blood? Anyway, so you see um, Darkseid also is the big bad of their universe. Uh, but Steppenwolf also isn't just brushed aside. He just feels like a one-off villain. Kind of like, I guess, when you're watching the first Avengers now, you're like, oh, it's just Loki. You know, at the time, I was like, oh, Loki. And then, you know, they had to build up to Thanos. But um, knowing that Darkseid was coming up, you're like, oh, Steppenwolf. But Steppenwolf has... Uh, a little more humanity. I don't know if that's the right word, but he seemed to have um, upset Darkseid somehow, betrayed him, some backstory there at some point, and uh, Darkseid's kind of pissed off at him. So he's trying to get these mother boxes to do the unity, to give Darkseid the planet, so he can be like, hey, friends, can we be cool again? Um, he makes three phone calls to Desaad while he's uh, making progress, so you kind of get that he's eager um, and then you see him, uh, you see him take his armor off when he addresses Darkseid. I thought that was just a cool moment. Even though this is his nephew, he's still, like, below him. Uh, it's, it's interesting. Uh, some, there are scenes that people thought, I think people, people would think dead are too long. And I thought when he made the three calls to him was much. It's a fun thing to point out, but at the same time, I'm like, I'm cool with it. It works. And then when he finally talks to Darkseid, that was really awesome. Um, the parademons, uh, they're about the same. Um, Cyborg, Flash, and Aquaman have much larger roles, and the bringing the team together takes a lot longer, and it's a little more frustrating, but it, it feels like a magnificent seven, seven samurai, and seven samurai, which was three hours. Now, someone out there is like, you fucking dare compare this to seven samurai? The idea of getting the team together to, for a common goal. Yes, it's the same thing. It's all been done. Kira Kurosawa, 1950-something. Excellent movie. See it. See it. Anyway, so uh, we go back and we have this. The length actually works in its advantage. Superman being dead. Uh, his comeback is very similar with that whole scene. Um, but there's just a little more moments that are dragged out. But also you saw uh, a lot less humor which was good uh, in terms of that weed enforced humor. Uh, Superman coming back, he's in a black suit. He's not in this very bright red suit. And also Superman's consistency to Snyder's movies is there. Superman in Joss Whedon's uh, Justice League is not the same person at all. It's like he got invaded by someone. He's brighter, he's more bubbly. He's what you would expect Superman to be if someone said, draw me Superman. Excuse me. But Zack Snyder has already established his Superman. It's different. That's one of the reasons I liked Man of Steel so much. It took me a while. I'm like, well, that's not what I wanted or expected. And then I just grew to accept it. And the fact that everything Doomsday was formed from uh, Zod and then like Superman ship, like the whole reason he's there, destiny, faith, that type of stuff. It's really cool how that plays into this. Also, the, the movies all bleed into each other, like I said, so they all have to do with what happened in the previous one. They're not just like, well, this is separate, this is separate. Um, there is a cohesion and there's a plan. Uh, is it the best thing ever? No, I watched the four hours. I thought it was extremely enjoyable. Uh, I would definitely watch it again. And if you were, this, this franchise is more marathonable. Yes, I made up a word. Marath marathonable. Because watching three movies might be easier than watching 23 movies of the MCU. I'm not saying one is better than the other, because both have their pros and both have their cons. Yep, DC and Marvel. Or you can just like both. You can. You can. But uh, the overall feeling is, was this worth the wait? Yes. Um, was I counting the days down? No. Was it exactly what I expected? Ah, yeah, actually, it's kind of what I expected, but I enjoyed the hell out of it. Um, Zack Snyder, once again, got to do his version of a movie. Uh, he's a very fortunate director in that respect. Of, uh, he got to do his Watchmen. Uh, he had the theatrical cut. There was a director's cut. There was an ultimate cut. So he got to make the full version of that. He got to do his Batman vs. Superman, and now he got to do his Justice League in terms of getting stuff done. It never seems to be on the first try, so... Uh, what you learn about Hollywood is it's uh, a comp and it's like a give and take. So a lot of times he'll 
you'll see the theatrical versions of some of these movies a lot of movies that aren't the director's true vision but there's time differences story differences future differences that uh, the studio and the director have but i will always be interested in seeing uh, a director's vision but also they you can never forget about uh, this version not like it's a stain on the earth it's not it's just also important to know how the movie business works this is the result but this is not the end all be all uh i don't know if this is gonna there's gonna be more director or last name director cut versions of movies uh, with the way everything's going with hollywood who, who, who the hell knows and uh just always happy to see something come out that uh i guess people wanted to see i don't like this